In Health Watch, the CDC says the Delta variant of the coronavirus first identified in India now accounts for more than 50 percent of the cases here in the U.S. It's spreading rapidly across several states and many of the people getting sick are unvaccinated. Nancy Chen is in Springfield, Missouri, uh, where, you know, when I read about the situation there, Nancy, I thought uh, you'd back, you know, a year and a half at the beginning of this pandemic, it looks like they're revisiting that nightmare. Yeah, it's been really surprising to be on the ground here and hear about the spike in cases and see what uh, hospitals are experiencing right now, just as more people are really relaxing their behaviors. A hospital here is actually seeing the most COVID patients it has seen this entire pandemic, as doctors and those who have lost loved ones are urging people to stay vigilant. Deborah Carmichael lost her daughter, Trisha Jones, to the Delta variant almost a month ago. It was so severe. You, you can't believe how bad she looked physically and while she was suffering, of course, internally. But um, this variant is just brutal. It, it takes no prisoners. Carmichael says Jones was hesitant to get the COVID vaccine to begin with. But then she saw her mother get sick after her first shot. That really freaked her out. And then she, after that, she was just adamant that she wasn't going to even mess with it. By the time she was kind of again thinking about, well, maybe I should do this or something, she had already picked up COVID. As the Delta variant rages across the U.S., 14 states, including Missouri, still have less than 50 percent of their populations vaccinated. New data from Johns Hopkins warns the rate of COVID cases is almost three times higher in states with low vaccination rates. Definitely, we wouldn't want to be in this position again. Dr. Mayrell Juarez is a pulmonary critical care physician at Missouri's Mercy Hospital Springfield, where they've had to add a second COVID ICU due to the rise in hospitalizations. We have patients as young as newborns, or we have patients in between the ages of 30 plus. The disease process is faster than before, and they are getting sicker sooner than before. It feels like a lot of people have let their guards down. It's very sad to talk to a patient and ask, you know, what will you do different? And all of them in Beverly said, I wish I would have taken the vaccine. Carmichael says that's what Jones told her after she got sick. She said, Mom, you were right. I should have gotten the vaccine and I should have worn my mask more. I think she kind of felt a little overconfident that even if she got it, she would be okay. And Dr. Horace tells us there is also concern right now that those case numbers we've been seeing will continue to go up now that we've just come out of a major holiday weekend. And Marie. So uh, right before your story started, we played a little bit of what the president had to say. He spoke yesterday on efforts to vaccinate Americans. I want to play that sound again. We need to go to community by community, neighborhood by neighborhood, and oft times door to door, literally knocking on doors to get help to the remaining people protected from the virus. So Missouri is one of the states that asked for help from the federal government's a newly announced surge response teams. How does that program work? Well, at this point, those search teams, they're looking to target hard hit areas, especially those with low vaccination rates. And Missouri is certainly among those in the country with a very low vaccination rate. And the, the goal here is to help with testing, to, to see detection of this virus, and also to help with contact tracing and to really be able to target these hard hit areas. Anne-Marie. We've seen some states offer incentives for people to get vaccinated. Any incentive programs there in Missouri? At this point, uh, the governor has talked about it, but there is nothing that's really been announced. And yes, at this point, we've seen uh, so many states that have made those announcements with offering up fishing licenses, with offering up baseball tickets, et cetera, et cetera. But at this point for Missouri, they still have not officially announced anything. And then what about COVID restrictions like masks or social distancing? Are those restrictions still in place? Well, Missouri has really been one of the least restrictive states in the country when it comes to these uh, mm. standards and conditions that they want people to really follow. They never actually had a statewide mask mandate. And from what we've seen and in, in walking around and being part of this community these, uh, you know, this past day or so, we've really seen that people have returned to normal. Wow. Um, 
you know, he, uh, in New York, they're going to be holding a ticker tape parade for those frontline workers, including medical personnel. We've heard so many stories of the grueling marathon that medical uh, personnel have had to endure over the last year and a half. And in many cases, especially in the height of the pandemic, you know, it was really it felt almost thankless because so many people were dying because of this um, this this virus. I I'm wondering there in Missouri, they're heading back into a surge. Have you heard from hospital workers? about just how they're handling this this new additional pressure they are exhausted yesterday we spoke with that uh, yeah. critical care physician who spends a lot of time in the ICU dr. Horace and he told us that his staff and his his co-workers they are exhausted they are burnt out they've already been here once before and now it just psychologically and also physically it's exhausting to know that they are right back here again uh, and that they're opening up a second ICU you uh, an ICU because of the spike in cases yeah, that, that has got to be tough. They are working so hard to save people. You want people to want to save themselves as well, get vaccinated and do all the right things. Um, Nancy, thank you so much. Thank you.